Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I teach philosophy here at NYU, Program of Liberal Studies. And it is a great joy and honor today to be together to reflect about how to write a paper. There are six videos in this short mini course. The first one is why, why are we writing? The second one is what, what are we writing? The third one is who, who is our audience? The fourth one is when, which, one are, which ones are our roots, our, our genealogies, which are our references? Five is where, where are we locating our content within the paper, the architecture of the paper? And six, how, how are we writing this paper? What is the tone of the paper? In this second uh, video, we are talking about what. What is uh, the, uh, the material, the, 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 the reason why you're writing? And so the reason why you're writing, we talked in the first video, is love, love for what you write, care about for what you write. But what is that? And so you need to be very clear about what is that you want to convey. What is your message? What is your main argument? Uh, there is a very simple exercise to do this. Uh, if you try to explain to someone who is not in your class, who is not studying what you're studying, who is not doing what you're doing, can be a family member, can be a friend, can be someone you are chatting with in the subway and doing, saying what you're doing, someone who is not in your field, and you should be able to tell them within one minute, one minute, what is that you're writing about? What is your argument? What is that you are trying to show? So your argument should be so clear that you can summarize your argument in one line. One line, your argument, one line. In one minute of conversation, you can explain what is that you are trying to express. Uh, the title is fundamental. So this is true for everything you're going to be writing about, being that a poem, being that a job application, being that a book. So the title is what catches your audience, is the first input. And over, you know, nowadays people are overwhelmed with so much material. There is so much to be reading. So much information is accessible. You want to stand out. You want to make sure that your title is not only very clear about what you're writing about, but is catchy. It is a good title. The title itself is a work of art. So when you are thinking about what are you writing about, your title should be able to clarify that. And then within the first paragraph, and we're going to talk about this in uh, video number five, where in the introduction, you should have already there in the first page, first paragraph, you're going to give out your argument. Not only your argument, but as we're going to see also your roots, especially if you're talking about a, uh, an academic paper. So going back to the what. The what is clear argument, crystal clear argument, no doubts about what you want to show. If you don't know what you want to show, if you don't know what you want to write, don't write yet. Another way to do about it is maybe start writing as a draft, and while you're writing, the argument may come up, it may be very clear to you. But once the paper is done, once you submit your paper, the argument has to be there. A paper with no argument cannot be an A, because the whole purpose of writing a paper is sharing your argument. If there is no argument, what are you writing about? And nowadays, less and less professors want a paper that just summarizing the topic of what are ancient philosophy or contemporary philosophy, because nowadays you can find everything online. So this was true for the past. Maybe a paper just wanted to show that you know about that specific topic. But nowadays, with generative AI, with Wikipedia, with all these powerful tools, we do not need to show that we can summarize all the world's knowledge. Although we will show in, uh, in our fourth video that philosophy, but any academic writing, has to be rooted in knowledge that is much, that has been around much longer than us. Mm? So it is uh, a dialogue that goes from the past 
to the present and even to the future. Someone like the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, in fact, was writing for the future generations because he knew that the people of his own time could not understand him. So, to finalize this uh, very important video about what, you need a good title that summarizes your topic. You need a very clear argument that can be shared with anyone that you know, not only people in academia or not only people who are in your field. People outside of academia, people outside of your field should understand at least some of what you're trying to explain. Now, I want to say something else here about the content. We are going to go more in depth about uh, this on our fourth video. But the content, don't ever take for granted that you know your content. Always double check your content. I had a lot of students coming from specific cultures and they thought that maybe very important philosophers from their own region said that. And they would quote someone without double checking and it would often come out that the person never said that phrase. So this is true about all your content. Always double check your content, either for a paper that you're submitting or for a job proposal or for a project where you're asking some fundraising. Always double check your content. Don't ever take for granted that you, you know your content. Check your content. And the last thing is uh, something you really want to avoid is plagiarism. Plagiarism is very, very serious in academia. So serious that if you do plagiarize, you might actually be expelled from that specific program. Is that serious? Why is that serious? Because academia is not just about, about being original thinkers. It's about knowing how to study. No one is expecting you to bring you know, the, 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 the creativity of the universe uh, from A to Z. We are here, we are all a diverse range of humans to do that together. We don't need you to know everything, to be omniscient. Mm? But we need you to know how to study, to recognize your roots, and to acknowledge them. So for instance, I might think that I am a genius proposing the um, thought uh, experiment of the eternal recurrence, which is a really great experiment that, again, going back to Nietzsche, he proposes. And then when I study a little more, I realized that this was actually shared vividly and clearly by such a great, great philosopher in uh, one of the most amazing books that does, uh, spoke Zarathustra. So you, you know, even if something sounds like, you know, it became part of you and now you really own it, you need to acknowledge the people who came before you, who did the work for you. And from there you can fly as a bird and really bring your own originality. So just to say one more time, plagiarism not only is really serious, so if you use someone else's work and use your name, you can really be, uh, you can be expelled from the program. Is that serious? Second of all, you need to understand that you don't have to know everything. Acknowledging other writers, other philosophy is part of the academic path, is recognizing your roots. By recognizing your roots, you can nourish them. And one more thing about plagiarism is nowadays there are powerful tools like generative AI, for instance. Now, you really always double check with your professor if it is okay or not to use that. It is usually never okay to just ask generative AI to write the paper for you. Why is that? Because you're spending years in an academic pro program to learn. And so this is not the time to go the shortcut. This is the time to really refine your tools. If you don't do it now, you may have less time later on. Let's say when you're working, maybe some of you are watching this video because they are writing a project for some fundraising at their, job, uh, um, at their jobs. And they may have to rush and, you know, like, and they will not have all the time that maybe a student at university has to really refine your tools. The people who are watching, who are studying right now in an academic program like NYU Liberal Studies, pay, take this time for you, refine your tools. This is your lab. These years are your lab. So generative AI can be interesting. For instance, I'm going to ask my students to write dialogues uh, with generative AI. Uh, what is the existential take, for instance, of generative, generative AI? Be in a dialogue, ask them questions that are not just, you know, what does uh, Nietzsche think about the eternal recurrence? So you can play around with that. You can place parts of your, you know, dialogues uh, but you always need to credit. You always need to let 
the readers know that this was generated to generative AI. And again, if you're writing an academic paper, always double check with your professors. A lot of professors are going to say not generative AI. Some of them may say, OK, but in a creative way where you are still really using this time to write a paper to refine your tools. So to summarize, the what is fundamental. If you are unclear about what is your argument, take one day, take two days, meditate on it, take a really nice walk in the forest if you can, or Central Park if you are at NYU here, and really make sure that what you want to write about is what you are actually writing about. So thank you so much for your kind attention. Enjoy the journey of writing. My name is Francesca Ferrando, and in our next video, we are going to talk about our dear audience when we are writing something. Thank you so much.